Hey, what's up everyone? Thank you for tuning in. Instead of thinking of this as a straight tips video, I want you to think of it more as a my own personal checklist for SPS success video. All right guys, let's get started. I'm not gonna spend too much time on this topic because I made a whole video on it, but in my experience, in general, your acros are going to be more happy under hybrid lighting. In fact, my dream tank would have all three T5s, LEDs, and metal halides. Go check out that video, after this one of course. This may seem a bit trivial, but I have heard gurus say the same thing. I usually don't let detritus hang around longer than about two weeks. I use mechanical filtration in the form of filter socks so my sump is clean and my display is bare bottom so I can easily siphon out detritus during a water change, which I do often. Don't get me wrong, I do prefer the look of sand, but since sand is kind of a detritus trap, that alone conflicts with my belief that getting detritus out of your system is best for Acropora. This is probably the most common tip you hear about keeping Acropora. It is totally true. Just keeping things stable alone gives me better growth and better coloration. I usually check stuff about every week, more often if I have recently made a change. As for patience, I'll end this point by sharing with you something that a reefing buddy told me when he started to figure out Acropora. Keeping SPS has taught me patience for sure. I thought a one inch frag would turn into a colony in six months. Now I realize that it takes months and months for them to even do anything and sometimes they don't do nothing. Now I'm fine with waiting as long as the polyps are out and the colors are good. They will eventually take off. So I am huge on having a lot of biological filtration. This is why I don't do minimalist aquascapes and I made it a point to have rock rubble in my frag tank. And I suspect that biological filtration in the display is better than anything unlit in your sump, like ceramic blocks or balls or even unlit live rock in the sump. It's not something that I can prove, it's just what I believe. And I prefer quality porous calcium carbonate based rock. I'm very hesitant to use man-made rock. In a moment, you will see that having strong biological filtration supports the ultimate goals of my tanks. I think this is one of the more debated topics out there when it comes to keeping Acropora, but I have been running Rolofos since 2009 without any problems. My corals are not overly pale, they are not starving. In fact, I have never ever lost a coral due to having very low phosphates. I can say on the flip side of it though, that when my phosphates hit about 0.10 ppm, I do have corals that lose tissue. With that said, I do think that you can be too aggressive with roll of phos, so just use a little bit at a time to bring phosphates down slowly. Currently I run about a cup through my reactor in my 120 and in my 140, and I change it out religiously every month. But I do believe in this stuff. As I mentioned in my April update video, my corals seem more vibrant with better polyp extension when I run it. The goal for my systems is to get them to the point where I can feed the fish really heavy and at the same time have low nitrates and phosphates. To me that's the holy grail. That is the point where you get great growth and rich coloration. But you obviously can't get to that point without having a mature tank that has strong biological and mechanical filtration, efficient nutrient export, and on top of that requires diligence on your part to keep it stable. Which brings me to my next point. I do not go through periods of neglect. I love this hobby so I'm always paying attention to my tanks. It's like any other pet. It's hard to have a dope Acropora dominated tank if it's going to be neglected, automate what you can and stay on top of maintenance. But with that said, keep it as simple as possible. Yes, I do have a controller and would be uncomfortable without one, mainly because of the temperature and pH safety checks it gives me. But other than that, I have a filter sock, skimmer, roll foss, bucket fuge, and three-part doser. 
The less stuff you have, the less maintenance, and the fewer points of potential failure. Simplicity is safer and simplicity is easier. I'm very serious about my source water, I don't mess around with it. Buying water from a fish store is a waste of money, time, and gas, but most importantly, I really don't trust people with my source water. And as you can see, I don't have a minimal RODI setup either. One carbon block and one DI stage is not enough in my experience. It is a great investment because it's not a large upfront cost and replacing filters are not that expensive relative to other stuff in this hobby. And I definitely err on the side of changing my filters early because by the time your product water hits one TDS, your water is really disgusting. You need to avoid that. Don't rely on a TDS meter to measure the purity of your product water. A TDS meter's main purpose is to measure the percent rejection from the RO membrane. It's not sensitive enough for our SPS tanks. Alright guys, last but not least, this is probably one of the most important things and probably one of the most overlooked or ignored aspects of keeping Acropora successfully in the long term, and that's coral quarantine. I wrote an article on this topic for my website back in 2018. I will leave a link for it in the description. I encourage you to check it out. But to summarize, having a tank free of Acropora eating flatworms and red bugs and Monopora eating nudibranchs, that all starts with buying from a trusted, reliable source. You should really only buy aquaculture corals because this will significantly decrease your chance of contracting one of these parasites. Cut off or cover up anything that's not healthy coral tissue, dip them if they are not too stressed, and place your new arrivals in quarantine or isolation so that you can observe them for months. Because once a parasite gets into your system, you are going to regret it. Believe me. Be careful out there. Go check out that article. Well alright guys, those are the practices that have helped me keep Acropora dominated tanks for over 10 years without any major problems or tank crashes. I hope that you got something out of it. Thank you so much for making it this far. Let me know what you think about what I said in the comments below. Until next time, boom! I'm out.